Welcome here to CT Style. I'm Ryan Christopher. And I'm Laura Hutchinson, in for Teresa, who has the day off. She's celebrating. For good reason. Big milestone today, her son Dante's first birthday. I bet Yay. that went by fast for the family. Look at this little guy, huh? How cute is he? He's Happy birthday, Dante. I think she said they were going to Mystic today. Nice. What a nice way to celebrate. But, but hopefully they are at home watching CT Style. I'm sure of course, they are. I'm as sure. you are at home or yeah. online at WTNH.com. So we want to thank you for joining us. We have a, a lovely show live up for everybody today and we're going to kick things off with what is brewing. Michael Phelps back uh, making headlines, huh? Yeah, how about that? He begins his bid for more gold medals, of course, with the Olympic pre-trials in Omaha, Nebraska today. And Phelps is now saying that this could actually be his last competitive swim on U.S. soil. You know, he spent more than half of his life in a swimming pool and he could be getting ready to retire. Uh. Okay. The 18-time Olympic gold medalist looking to compete in four events in the summer's Olympics in Rio. I can imagine that that's tough on the body. You know, you not only have the competition, but you have to train for all of that. Yeah. So. And I mean, he he's known for for having one of the the best uh, training uh, repetitions right. known to man. I mean, the the guy eats so many calories, uh, right. works out so hard, so right. it can it's take a toll. Tough on the body. I'm sure he's looking forward to a little time off, relaxation. A little Can't R and R for for our buddy Michael Can't Phelps there. Him. Moving on to a little cute story here. There's a little Wally mixed with a little bit of Johnny Five. That's <laughs> one way to describe this new robot companion. Yes, maybe it's your new best friend. His name is Cosmo, and it's a 2.5 inch tall robot designed to seem like it has a quote unquote soul. Oh, this, nice. this is kind of weird. <laughs> the San Francisco company programmed him to move, interact, and emote using a combination of artificial intelligence, ah. image, voice recognition, animation. I guess there's actually a camera in his face so that he can identify who is playing with that's, him. That's creepy. It's all with the help of an app because everything has an As, app now. An app for that. He can yeah. even remember the person's identity. Uh -huh. I think the whole thing is just a little bit weird for me. Also, uh, he can get grumpy if he's poked or turned on his back. So make sure you don't poke Gizmo. That, yeah, see, I put I put him in the closet. I'd be like, hey, don't so, get grumpy on me. So don't no, bring my day down. No, no, no Gizmo for Laura <laughs> I today. Think no. So. Okay. That's a little weird. But hey, it will be. A Available this October if it's for you. It's going for $179, which we were saying actually kind of sounds yeah. almost cheap for something a with a soul. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know. Hey, Interesting. Maybe your new best friend at home. Who we'll knows? See. Things are getting wild up in Massachusetts. Last week we told you about the story of the monkey escaping the zoo. We, right. bl we blamed it on Laura Dizzy, because she course. used to hang out up there. And now <laughs> it's a dolphin. What is happening up there in the waters in Massachusetts? This little guy was set free after getting stuck in a river in Freetown, Mass. Mm, see, he must have thought that the town Freetown, oh, man, he, he was, was probably free. like, I'm going to be, yeah, little <laughs> did he know. <laughs> Police there actually named the little guy Flipper. The uh, dolphin became stuck on Friday and then again on Saturday. Oh. So he was just kind of in a pool of bad luck there. I, I don't understand how, how would a dolphin end up there? I, I don't understand It's interesting that. how the waterways work, mm, you know, yeah. they're all intertwined, yeah. but hey, he knew there was Freetown, so he so was... So that's why he was there. It's, it's funny, our, our reporter Meg Yost was saying, she, she's from Waterford, she was saying that that happened in Waterford, that, really? that a dolphin went up through uh, near the power plant there, so you never know what you're going to see uh, up here in the northeast. And moving on a bit here, according to a new study, people may judge you for the type of makeup that you're wearing. Do you, do you buy into this? You know, I mm, I don't know. People judge. Well, sort of listen. Kind of? Okay. okay, so here's the story. Mm. Both men and women make judgments about you, apparently based on your makeup. That's what the survey says. Yep. But it's not your looks they're judging. It's your personality and how dominant you are. The University of Sterling study found that women view women who wear a certain amount of makeup as more dominant and more promiscuous. I see that. Men see women who wear makeup as more prestigious. Oh. And this is interesting. Women were actually jealous of other women wearing makeup because they considered them to be more attractive than men. See, I think that women do size each other up in a way, kind of naturally. Yeah. But I don't think it's always in a negative judging way. You I don't do think, think so? that we empower one another. Yeah. And I think you kind of I think there's an interest in style and what other women are doing. Are and wearing. I think it's more of an interest, you yeah. know? You know, you compliment each other, lift each other up, and yeah. you see what works for others. I don't always think it's in a negative way, and I think that study almost makes it sound negative. I, I can see from a guy's perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I know me personally, when I, I I look at a woman who's wearing a little less makeup, I, I like the au natural look. Agreed. You know, yes. I think sometimes too make too natural much makeup, you're be you're hiding something, or right. there's some self esteem issues there. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. I can also see how how like on, on TV it has to be a little different for you, right. and and for a lot of people on TV. And you know. 
but there is a creative side to it too. People who wear a lot of makeup might just be expressing themselves in some way too, you know? And so I think to each his own. Really? I'm, I'm not wearing any today, by the way. This is I'm the, judging you. Oh. <laughs> Please don't do that. Please don't do that, Laura. Hey, more fun here on the show this morning. We were cruising Connecticut on Good Morning Connecticut. Uh, and, of course, we were looking at some of the best things that the state has to offer. Yeah, this morning we were talking about how appropriate. We were talking mm -hmm. about donuts. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's kind of funny how this guy started his business, Neil, from Neil's Donuts. He was working for a big company, and he was the guy that was always sent on donut runs. Right. And apparently he started spending too much money on all of his donuts. He got in trouble about, by the boss, so he decided to stick it to the man and open his own donut shop in Wallingford. Can we get a piece like this, roll it out to the proper thickness. And one at a time, cut it by hand. They go uh, about 45 seconds. It's like donut chopsticks here. So how many donuts are you making every day? On the weekdays, we probably sell about 150 to 200 dozen. Dozen? Dozen. Wow. Yes, yes. Do you, do you get tired of donuts? Do you... No, I never get tired. I'm always, uh, don't tell my doctor, but we're always... <laughs> sneaking one in here and there. It's a donut shop the way it used to be. We have about 40 types. First batch of donuts. There you go. Done. You don't just fill the donuts, you cut them. Yes, we cut them in half, fill them by hand. Well, I had a jelly injector my first day. It was a pump. It broke on the first donut. So we had to get the jelly in somehow. And so there was a knife, we cut it in half. Put the jelly in, people think that's a great idea. No kidding. And, and, and did the first customer ask you about it? Were they like, what's, what's up with this donut? Well, or? eventually, I, I can't. Within a week or two, people were saying, how come you cut it? Yeah. But I told them the truth. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. That must have smelled mm. so good in there. So yummy. And of course, so admirable of Neil there to tell the truth to his customers and say, hey, I cut it. I it. love that. Yeah. It gives a character. So so unique. And I mean, uh, yeah. tons of fans of that place here uh, this, this morning. A lot of tweets, a lot of people here in the studio really excited about it. So a great local spot to check out. And I like that they have their own little thing to it. They, they cut do. their donuts. They, they cut it. They hey, do. also, quick reminder, head on over to our Facebook page, CT Style WTNH, or tweet one of us and let us know if there's something that you want us to check out for Cruise in Connecticut. Let us know because, man, do we want to check out some fun stuff here in Connecticut. Okay. We have a great show coming up for you today. Here's what's up next.